tech rabbit here. So anyway, now we've done the um, disassemble, cleaning, restoration, repair. And now it's to final assembly. So um, let's get started with the disk drive. Now I did uh, replace the disk drive. Well, I'm in the process of replacing the with a newer one. So what you need to do is we need to move. We need to move these two posts over to the new drive. is that this is made of plate and this is made of aluminium casting so it's got a full thread let's see let's see well I don't know if you can see it in the camera but see how they made the threads so they got a little bit of they like cut into the beginning of the thread to give it a bit of relief and that's the problem is that this the thread made into this um, into the plate it actually ends up at that uh, relief but I actually because it actually you can't move it up it, there's no slack so I think it'll be okay so it's going to be screwed through the bottom so I say uh, okay not perfect but I don't think it'll impact the functionality so that's the this drive ready to go in so moving on and what we will start with is we will take the um, main board base and then we have to put the, remember to put the protective insulation plastic piece in the right way around. So that looks okay. And then we need to take the board. Like that. Oh, the board needs to end up inside that lip. And then we have the connectors here. And this is design this is the um, uh, 500 design where actually you have to uh, each of these screws uh, impacts on this. So now we have to actually screw in all the, all these little screws. And um, the way I do it is that since there's a risk of them always getting jammed over time, is that I'm going to put some um, just a little bit of white grease on the threads while I'm putting them in. And um, there is actually how many are all there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Oh, it's around ten, eleven. So <laughs> anyway, but you can see where they're going to be at. It's just to screw them in. So and now I'm going to put some a little, just a little bit of grease on them. So I'll be back when I've finished that job. So anyway, that's all the. Also, and it's very useful to have this kind of a socket smaller around so you can actually get into um, uh, fits in there so you get in there and then you can screw it tight not too tight because these aren't um, terribly strong but at least tighter than what you can get with your fingers and and if you try and use pliers then they very easily slip and, and you kind of destroy the uh, destroy the screw a little bit so, anyway. 
go this far, and then the, the next thing is to actually take the, the bottom, which is now clean, and then we need to position this. In its correct position. It is there. Oops. I always forget where it actually Ah, there. Of course. It's actually difficult dealing with it when it's the other way around, but that looks okay. Then it's the uh, disk drive first, so let me take the disk drive and it sits where those two holes are, so those line up there. And it has another screw there. Special thing that it screws in. So, what we're going to try and do, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and put that one in first. And then it also has a screw here on the side. So, I will try and get all this aligned up. I know it's a bit tricky, so I it's going to be hard to show on the film, so be back when I've got it positioned. Because I remember the positioning on that one, and that was the, that was, it keeps on falling off and everything. So, let's, so wish me luck. Now, I just have to mention that those that didn't watch the disassembly video, but it's actually was missing um, this screw here and the two screws that um, come from underneath. So I'm going to have to have to find good replacements for those. Oh, that wasn't easy. I had to, um, <laughs> for the, the screws that should come through the bottom here uh, with the right length and then end up in those. I had to um, actually take some of my 3D printer project screws. So I'm hoping that we'll, we'll actually fit now. to get it long, but I think I got it now. That is one weird screw. I wonder if that's wrong. I'm going to have to investigate that. I think uh, they might have put a wrong screw in that. So the, the razor that's here, which is that, and it's got a screw in it. I think that, that screw's way too long. It won't, it won't even tighten from below, so I have to actually find a replacement for that. So I think it was just that it's some odd reason this has lost that screw, that screw, 
and this screw. And then they tried to like they tried to screw this and they didn't bother with these two. So I don't really know. So anyway, looking for one more screw. Okay, hope I <laughs> found one that's oh, I didn't check this thread. Yeah, that's the same. See now, oh, it's gotta be impossible to fill. But now you see it doesn't, doesn't uh, the the thread doesn't hit the bottom. So uh, then it can actually tighten on the plastic. God, I thought that was so loose. That can't be, can't be right. Oh, I won't fit in there. The head's too big. So, I have to continue looking. <laughs> okay, I think I found a 3D printer assembly screw that actually work. But then one has to load the one has to actually screw this one first to the drive. side needs to go here. feels nice and sturdy and then one needs to press down on that and tighten this screw. So now we <laughs> no, it's not flying around like the other ones were. And now I have a problem where I have maybe not the right length of torque screw for these two pylons, but I'm just going to have to test. I'm just hoping that it will not be too long. sound or something else. Don't know. Ah, you can't see it. But the drive is basically it's, it's well in place. I would have liked to have had a better length of a screw for the other on the side of this one here. But, um, I can't argue that it isn't in and um, it seems to be holding. So I think I'll just have, but it's better than what it was since it actually didn't have any, <laughs> any screws holding the drive. And the drive seems to be lined up. Okay. 
And I just love the fact that I will look at it directly. Mm. What should one line up on? There's no st real straight edge to line up on with the drive. Just wondering if the drive should be a little bit lifted up. drive to line up with the um, casing. So I had to adjust the screw here to move it up a little bit. But I think it should be okay now. And that's, this one needs to be plugged in. I'll go around here. Just gonna double check that it's actually going in correctly. So, and the cable is keyed, so there's not really that possibility of... Ah, uh, that really just doesn't lie down as nice as I would like. That's the cable. Because now the case is going to come on top of it. I never really liked this cable, it somehow it doesn't want to cooperate that nicely. feel good either. Ah, don't want to break it. See on my Amiga 500 Classic this was, this made a very much nicer bend. So I don't know why this um, this makes such an ugly bend. Or I think it's very ugly. And there's no way to get it to like Strange that this just does not lay down like it's so, like nice. All right. Well, I suppose we just have to accept it. And then the top goes on. Ah, I really don't like that that much. Okay, let me put the power and also keyed connectors. Get that the wrong way around. So, moving on, and just to mention, we should not forget this. It has to go in here, and it will fall out. And we'll have to put it back, and it'll fall out. And have to put it back. So that's um, that's the way that works. Like the way that to 
turn it around so I can see how it's landing. I have to get all these clips aligned. In itself, it's not an easy task. Just on the edge. Oh, come on. Mm. Why is that not want to go out? Oh, it's this one in the corner here. This one. Not wanting to cooperate. lining up. I would have <laughs> yeah. That's this uh, tin piece. Uh, it's going to be a bit um, hard to get it lined up. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring these these pins down in all places. So we can have this, this side of it aligned. And then I have to work on um, getting this protection here. I can even see it like here because this, this, I remember from the um, classic that was, ah, that was, that was a bit of a pain to get in place. Anyway, I will um, just do that and then come back. Maybe I should show it. Yeah, I, I don't usually don't use sharp tools. I use like plastic just to push them into place. Then, but not to um, ruin the paintwork too much. And then they don't suffer so much from this. So that's done. This that was all there. One there, one there, one here. Oh, one of the other. Okay. I think I'll 
put the board alignments. Clean those screws off just a bit, they're quite dusty. Just trying to get the heads as clean as possible. I mean, they are a bit rusty, but I don't have this kind of that kind of screw so they have to do. Oh that's okay that's not that size so I have to find the correct Ah of course yep that's what it was it wasn't the time. It's not that kind of screw the Torx. I think I saved it here. Is it this one? Yep, that's it. So those are now aligned. And then the last tricky part is to get this that one aligned. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't fun on the classic either to uh, to get aligned. But I'll try and do my best. So to avoid recording curse and be back when I'm done. Oh did it. That looks relatively straight. Let's show it this way. So that's what the way it should look. And from the end make sure that it's lined up in the correct way. I don't think I short circuited it. And as you see, you have to push it back quite a lot because this tin piece here, it wants to it wants to spring out. So it often pushes this screw way too much that way. So you actually have to try and uh, push it back in. So, okay. So far, so good. And, um, so now then, the next thing to put on is the keyboard. Actually, I need to tie back the cable. I forgot to do that. I'm actually going to have to get the tie, but let's do this. So that goes in there. The cable needs to be tied back because I took it. I disconnected it to clean it in a previous video, and then there's number one, and that needs to go in. And the ears of number one on this side. And I got to try and put it down there in the hole. Oh, it's not that easy to show. But in there, in that hole, and it's difficult to have one's fingers and to get it aligned. So I'll be back when I've done that. 
So we just tie back this. Okay, so there's a hole there. If you didn't watch the disassembly, you won't know where it is. So, just holds it back a little bit. Okay, so now that we got this far, um, it's recommended to see if we, can, if we can power it on or have we created short circuits that have blown up the whole unit. That was close, timing wise. <laughs> that was just, just you know, once once started these, yeah, this this one many many times. So then I was like, oh, it's just going over the time limit for it to not be working. But whew. anyway, so we're there, and um, now we also want to, of course, check the check that the um, this drive is working, and I've just piled all. The, the junk on top of the oh then we forgot to put the mouse in it would actually probably be a good idea to check that the mouse port is still operational. Oops not good. What did I do? create a permanent failure on the mouse shouldn't do anything or did I create a static discharge oops okay that does not look good Back when I've researched what the was, was that what was going on? Because no, I couldn't reproduce it. <laughs> okay. And if you can't reproduce something then, then it probably doesn't exist. So moving on with testing. Maybe we'll get it to Oh well, that doesn't look good. Okay, I don't exactly know how to show it because it's, but there's a up here in the middle there's a plastic clip and I actually didn't have the motherboard clicked in, positioned into it. So we'll see if that has any. Um, anyway, let's see if we have any life in the disk drive and we don't well, <laughs> this is this assembly is not going that great whoa what the not having a good day 
Unless the disk drive won't work. Okay, now we're back to the black screen again. Take the shield off and again and see if I can figure out what's, what's not working. And definitely the disk drive isn't doing what it's supposed to. Something definitely in, in the connection of this. Because it's not clicking, so there's something wrong there. Oh, I think I need to take this off and see if I can get it to stay. Ah, heightened stupidity trying to do things too late at night. So, I succeeded in setting a keyed connector in the wrong position. Oh, I knew I should have double checked that. Should always double check. So I hope I haven't ruined the damn thing. Ah, I was just plain stupid. Let's see if I killed the machine. Nope, it sounds good. A load of work punch just to see that I haven't created any. Ah! No, it was I was trying to get this cable to to run nicely. I mean, I just, I just kind of like lost focus and I, it slipped one one row um, too far that way. Okay, but anyway, yeah, crap happens. be at least happy I didn't ruin the machines. Bingo. Anyway, I won't bore you. I'll, I'll catch up with you again after I put this up together to the, to the level we were before. <laughs> this has got everything just very bad. Uh, as I said, I blame it's too late for local time. 9 p.m. 2100 hours. Okay, it's not late, but I've had a long day. Uh, <laughs> also plugged in the keyboard one, one uh, pin rolled too far that way. Uh, but now, okay, I should have been alerted by the lamp. But you would have noticed this by this not lighting and the keyboard issue. I should have addressed immediately because it wasn't clicking like this. It's supposed to click, so I just. You know, Long day. But anyway, it seemingly doesn't seem to be ruined. We'll have to test the keyboard, so I'm just going to actually boot it now. So we're back to where what I wanted to be is to now. We're just going to do a test load of the workbench and then, um, yeah, just to see that some of the keys work too. The keyboard seems to be connected in. And the 
disk status LED seems to be working okay. I mean, the, the main thing is that things don't get ruined and destroyed. Of course, one needs to be careful of not fun restoring stuff and then just ruining it for some stupid mistake. But, um, oops, no, we don't. Ah, the mouse needs to be plugged into port one, otherwise, it will not work. Right. Fantastic trying to do things when you're too tired, you know, even the most obvious things like so you have two ports and one of them is the one that you should use and the other one isn't and then you just like oh I don't know, you know, whatever and then you plug it in and it'll, it'll end up in the wrong port. Uh, what was I gonna do? I was going to look at ah, I was just gonna bring up notepad all the text editor so I can just um, see that we have, have a few keys working. that's working so okay keyboards installed done that this drive is installed shield is back in place I've put all the internal screws in so now it's um, time to put the cover on so we have the nice clean clean cover Oops. in place. So. Oh, turn it carefully around. And this has six screws. Also. They're actually oddly enough the outside screws are or more clean than the inside ones, which is of course impressive. So there's three in here, or in the front, and then there's three in the back. If you don't do stuff, then nothing will ever happen. But well, then, of course, you won't get stuff done. So. One just has to go ahead and roll with it. Just a new old one. Hopefully we can now go oh, which way around did this go? Was it that way around? Or was it the other way? Oh, I can't remember. I'll have to look. Uh, where did it go? 
Mm. Alright, well, it's definitely this way around. So, I do remember this was a bit of a pain. Back when I when I get it in, but I do remember this was well, that was a bit difficult to get in. I don't know, that was that was interesting. As soon as um, as soon as I um, stopped, as soon as I stopped recording, that I actually got it in. <laughs> it's, oh, it's not a perfect fit. But it should be from an Amiga 500, so ah, I suppose it's just that it's different thermal expansion. Isn't it? It's been living a tough life. Okay, so. any light here. Sometimes these go in very easily and sometimes it's really hot. That's a bit better. Oh, but I could actually have it. I don't think I can have the power supply. Uh, okay, let's hope it works. So, and then last workbench load. And uh, actually, the test kit we don't we ran the if you if you have not watched we ran the test kit all the tests previous video when we were testing the ports. Uh -huh. and there is a little bit of a bug. The real-time clock is not set. And I'll do that offline to have to... Um, so I replaced the battery for the real-time clock. So I and I, we did test it in the um, in the test in the parts video, and then it worked. We, we even like powered it down and then powered it off again. So I'm going to oh, yeah offline. I'll set the time again. Maybe it's just that maybe it was my <laughs> no, nah, it's probably my quite probably my misconnections so that I made that might have reset the clock. Or I hope it hasn't broken it. So that, that would be sad. And as I said, I can take that offline. Uh, yeah, I would say this is pretty much done. I might spend a little bit more time on the real-time clock verification. Well, as I think we have it, have the main restoration completed. 
So, anyway, you saw the good and the bad of um, reassembly, so I <laughs> hope you learned something. And anyway, we will continue um, producing different content on, on this platform and others, and if you're interested, consider hitting the bell icon so you don't miss further videos. We have more, more Commodore products on the line. And, um, We'll see you in the next one. Hopefully not so late in the evening. Oh, okay, it's not late, but I'm not being so tired at least. So, you know, so kind of an experience. Okay, see ya. Hi. I'm Tech Rabbit <coughs> from the following day. So anyway, um, just the last word about the real-time clock. So what I did is I kept it plugged in overnight. And then I turned it off for two hours. And then when I restarted it, it still has the correct time. Or the time has advanced as one would expect. Or it's the correct time and the date is also correct. So so I think, I mean, basically when I uh, changed the battery, I didn't have it connected to the power supply for that, for that long after that. So I think that what happened was that... And I'm not sure if the battery, when when it was delivered new, actually had a charge in it, or whether it was just like uncharged. So it, it's quite possible that the battery just ran ran dry, and then the clock got reset. But um, anyway, that test I did. I kept the computer on overnight, and then I turned it off for two hours, and then turned it on again, and then it still had the clock. So I mean, I don't know if this is going to continue if one keeps it, if one has the computer off for a week if it will keep or um, or how long I actually don't know, really know how long one needs to keep the keep the um, computer running for for the battery to be fully charged I would think eight hours is yeah, like o overnight it's probably um, quite adequate to do that but anyway I just thought I'd put um, put this information out there so so anybody who changes the battery then knows at least that this test works so yeah. Um, put the computer on, have it on all night, turn it off for two, for two hours and put it on again, then you should still have the valid clock and date. <laughs>